Welcome to worship. We are glad to have you gathered here as a part of this community who worships God. As you worship today, we invite you to not only listen to the words, but uh, speak the responses of the prayers and sing the psalm and the hymns that we are singing together today in worshiping our God. They will be on your screen as well as attached in the worship guide that is attached in the comments. Our worship is led today by our cantor Brenda, our lector Norman, our accompanist who's substituting today, Eleanor, our um, sound light recording and editing team, John and Kathy, instrumentalist Rolf, and uh, we gratefully begin with a worship with a prelude offering by Eleanor. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, from you come all, all holy, holy desires, desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give, give to us, your servants, servants that, that peace which, which the world cannot give. give that, that our, our hearts, hearts may be set, set to obey your commandments, your commandments. And, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Amos. This is what the Lord God showed me the Lord was standing beside a, a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with a sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile, away from this land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there, and prophecy there. 
but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go prophecy to my people Israel. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven, and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him, who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, 
were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people to praise of his glory. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be to to God. God. That text which Norman just read will be the preaching text for this week and in the weeks to come. We have a few weeks of scripture text from the book of Ephesians and I think that it has something to say to us today. However, we will of course continue to read from the gospel. And the gospel reading today from Mark chapter six uh, continues this story of Jesus. In the last couple of weeks, I have described some of the social and political dimensions of the gospel and lest there be any doubt, we uh, see a very clear one in this gospel text, one that um, shows some of the backlash that uh, the gospel of Jesus did and still can evoke. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter. King Herod heard of the disciples preaching, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, ask me for whatever you wish and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, whatever you ask me, I will give you even half my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? She replied, the head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved. Yet out of regard for his oath and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When the disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite the children to draw near for the children's message. Hello, it's good to be with you today. I have a story I want to share called Toby. I think you can guess from the cover of the book, Toby must be the name of that white dog. Let's hear his story.
First we see this boy walking in, and someone says, hey, bud, can you help me unpack? Sure, dad. Could we get a dog? Well, if you promise to take care of it, we can. We went to the shelter on Saturday. There were a lot of dogs there. Dad says, how about this big yellow one? But I liked Toby. We bought bags and treats and took Toby home. Want a treat, Toby? He didn't want treats, and he didn't want to play. That night, he howled and howled and howled. <laughs> I gave him my special rabbit, and I slept right next to him. When I brought him breakfast, he hid. When will Toby play with me? You'll have to be patient with him. Then, Toby had an accident. Hey, bud, come and clean up this mess. Bad dog, Toby. It's time to do some training. It didn't go too well. Sit, fetch, please lie down. Come, Toby. Hmm. He's looking out the window at someone who's walking their dog. It seems to be going better. He even thought the yard was scary. Yes, says a cat. It's okay, Toby. So we tried again. Although I had school the next day, Dad said Toby could sleep on my bed. Good night, Toby. I'll be home soon. I worried about Toby all day, but he was waiting for me. Want to play? Woof! Uh-oh, not Dad's flowers. And then Dad showed me his glasses. They were all mangled. Dad said, maybe Toby isn't the right dog for us after all. I promise he won't do it again, I said. We were going to have to work hard, and we were going to have to work fast. Sit. Go fetch. Lie down, Toby. That was great. I knew Toby was the right dog for us. But the next morning, Toby wasn't on my bed. Dad? Where's Toby? Where is your other shoe? Grrr. Toby? Look, Dad, Toby found my shoe. Good dog, Toby. The boy in that story chose Toby from the beginning. And maybe Toby chose him, too. Um, the reading that Mr. Norman read was about how God has chosen us. Just because God loves us, God has chosen us to be a part of the family of God. And uh, some days things go well. Sometimes we mess up. But God keeps choosing us and has chosen us, has chosen you to be God's child. And that just doesn't change. It doesn't end. Um, and God loves for you to be a part of the family of God, just like Toby 
is a part of this family. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for choosing us to be those you love. Thank you that there's nobody you don't choose, but we um, are grateful that we have heard that we belong to you. Help us remember your love. Amen. When she was 12 years old, Keisha went to a track meet at Stanford. And from that day forward, she knew that was where she wanted to go to college. She could not wait. She told some people in her life that that was what she wanted. And they said, ooh, you're going to have to work hard and do well. And even then, you might not get in. And it's true. And she did work hard and do well. But then her junior year of high school, one day in February, her dear godfather fell asleep while driving and was in an accident and died. And she was crushed. And she made some bad decisions after that. And um, it affected her standing in her school. It affected her grades. It affected many things. She lost some friends. She decided to apply anyway. And the letter came about a year later that she was admitted to the next class at Stanford. And she was overjoyed to be chosen. Now, being chosen just meant that she was invited to walk forward with this new special community. It meant that she would have opportunities to learn that um, were well suited for her in the course of study that she wanted to, to follow. And it meant that, as well, that she would be um, expected to follow an honor code and to participate in the community life of the university. And when she was through, that she would be have an expectation that the opportunity she had been given would put her in service to others, really, for the rest of her life. So being chosen meant all of those things. Some of them she immediately grasped. Some would come later. In that moment, it was just this joy. The writer of Ephesians starts the letter to God's people in that way. You are chosen by God. Now, Ephesians was um, probably a circular letter that went around to a few churches uh, in Asia Minor. And it, it um, was speaking to maybe some second and even third generation Christians. And so it was people who had, some were new converts and others had heard the message probably throughout their life, the message of God's love in Jesus. As I preach about it, I might refer to it as Paul in his writing. Now, Paul was almost certainly not the actual author of this book because it came a little bit later, but it was inspired by Paul and his witness and his testimony. Um, and in the ancient world, uh, people who were disciples of someone like Paul or had learned from him would show honor by putting his name on the authorship of this kind of work. 
And so we hear these words, blessed be the God and Father. It's like a Jewish blessing that starts. Um, blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, would have been the, and still is the formula of blessing. And so Ephesians um, goes deep into that root of we are offering a blessing and thanksgiving to the one God of the universe who is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it harkens back to Abraham, who was chosen by God as well, chosen to um, be uplifted, to be uh, given God's blessing in order to carry the name of God, to carry the righteousness of God, the mercy of God, the loving kindness of God into the community of the peoples of the world. Ephesians has that same beginning point, except it is for people who know God through Jesus. And so, um, just like Keisha, um, getting the news that you have been chosen for this particular community, Ephesians is letting us know you are so loved you are made uh, special uh, because of God's love for you. And I want you to grasp it. I want you to know it. Uh, we hear in this writing that you've been adopted. Uh, and I, I have shared um, not too long ago that in the first century world, um, Greco-Roman world, there was sort of a fantasy of uh, being adopted by an upstanding family, like a senator's family, so that you then would receive all the wealth and honor and social standing and access that such a family would provide. And so the author of Ephesians is saying, that is your situation. You've been adopted, except not just that kind of family, but by the God of the universe. Over the top. And so those who would be hearing this letter, and us today, are invited to straighten up our backs a little, raise our heads a little bit higher, recognize in this moment that divine belonging and image that has been given to you. We're taught to love our neighbors as ourselves. And uh, we all fail at that. And one of the reasons we fail is selfishness and the church has often focused on that. But another reason we sometimes fail is that we don't love ourselves well. And that we need to hear these words of uh, being brought into God's family of love, being made uh, a child of the God of the universe in and through Jesus, who has redeemed us. We actually can't love others well if we don't love ourselves well. And so today, we're invited to hear that word of the love of God in Jesus that has been given to us. And then Paul goes on to say, um, this comes from the grace of the triune God. When you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in Jesus, you were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. It is that mark of baptism. 
Um, this is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. So the word there is something like uh, the pledge of our inheritance. It's like a down payment. So this household of God belongs to you, but, and God has already made that down payment. Um, the, the fullness of it has not been shown us in every way, in every aspect of our lives. But that Holy Spirit that you have experienced, that is that down payment for you to remember who you are in God. Now, this passage uses words like destined us for adoption. And there has been an, a fair amount of teaching in the historic church about predestination. I believe here, though, that the, the destined and predestined language of Ephesians 1 is not that before you were even born, some were picked for the good place and some were picked for the bad place. That is a distortion of the message of the gospel. Rather, it is that chosenness so that you who have heard the gospel might um, carry that message into the world. That's what you have been chosen to do. Just like Keisha being chosen to go to the school of her choice um, is given that as a gift and a grace and a joy and also as a charge and an invitation to a way of life. So we, the church, the people of God who follow Jesus, are invited to be the heart of humanity. We are, are invited to carry that heart of Jesus into the world in every aspect of it. Now, this opening to the book of Ephesians that we'll hear more from is an effusive and an overflow. And that's my final point. In the Greek, Ephesians 1, chapter 3 to 14, verses 3 to 14, is one sentence. I didn't tell Norman that before he read it today. Because uh, thankfully, the translators have put in some punctuation. But it is that excited, that overflow, I cannot wait to tell you um, in all of these words how over the top this good news is that we have been given. We have been given this inheritance of belonging to God, the Holy Trinity, God the Creator, Jesus, our Redeemer, and sealed by the Holy Spirit that all things in heaven and earth are to be brought together in Christ. So this does not exclude anyone or anything in the whole creation, but invites us today to give thanks to God and to praise the one who has entrusted this message of the gospel to us. Thanks be to God.
Let us come before the triune God in prayer, responding to each petition with the words, hear us and help us. O God, bless the church throughout the world. Uphold bishops, pastors, deacons, chaplains, and leaders of monastic communities. Protect from danger and contagion everyone who attends church camps throughout the summer and provide meaningful worship for the campers. That we might nurture one another in baptismal life, O God, hear Hear us us and help help us. Bless the earth, moderate the intense heat, give shade and breezes to all, and send necessary rain to nourish the crops. Preserve farm laborers as they work each day under the sun that your creation will survive and thrive, O God. Hear us and help us. Bless the leaders of nations. Crush the might of tyrants. Train those in power to care for the oppressed in their land. Lead wealthier countries to share the COVID vaccine with poorer nations. Protect whistleblowers and journalists and form us into persons without prejudice against others. That the nations might know peace and justice, O God. Hear us us and help help us. Bless all who live without power or status. Free the poor, especially youths, from every form of enslavement. Grant security and self-determination to indigenous peoples around the globe that all people might live in dignity, O God. Hear Hear us us and help us. us. Bless all who are sick or suffering. Comfort the survivors of disaster or gun violence. Protect us from the Delta variant of the coronavirus. Visit all who are imprisoned and accompany persons facing capital punishment. Receive our prayers for healing for John, Heidi, Jim, Marsha, Marilyn, Karen, Bryce, Gilbert, Janice, Candy. That all people might experience well-being, O God. Hear us us. and help us. Bless each of us that throughout this week we may pray and work in your name. Receive now our silent prayers. That each of us might live as your adopted child, O God. Hear us and help Help us. us. We bless you for all who have died in the faith, especially for Benedict of Nursia, and for those we remember before you here. At the end, fulfill your promise to us of life together in your presence. That we might be gathered up with all the saints in Christ. Hear us and help us. Receive these prayers, merciful God, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught his disciples in whatever is the language of our hearts, saying, Our Father Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your Your kingdom kingdom come. come. Your Your will be done on earth as as in heaven. Give Give us today our our daily bread. bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The earth belongs to God and all that is in it. The world is God's creation, and so are we. All that we have is from the gifts of God meant as a blessing to share. In these moments, we recognize our responsibility to manage these resources 
for the redemption of all God's people. Let us give with care. Let us pray together. With joyous praise praise and and dancing dancing spirits, we dedicate this offering, acknowledging our covenant covenant responsibility to to share your word and and love to all your people. In In gratitude gratitude for the gospel of salvation, we pledge our first loyalty and highest faithfulness as disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Following worship, there will be an online coffee hour via Zoom, and the link is in the comments, also in our Friday email. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. body of Christ. Thanks be Be to to God. God.